the gates of Samino. Three. Chamber knife gun. time to do this episode it's when it's hot as fuck as it is right now it is just i mean it's like we're in vietnam it's like (laughs) we are in viet on the right on the on the ho chi minh this is this this is this this this, this is something else this is this i don't know what the fuck you talking about nobody what the fuck you talking about you see this stan this is this you know it's funny talking about vietnam uh in the vietnam sequences throughout deer hunter they were really on the river kwai the the part where they yeah after the scene with the russian roulette and everything they escape when they're in the in the water that's the actual river kwai damn i had I, i i knew that they were somewhere like they weren't in america yeah, but I had no idea that that was that they had like legit gone back there. You know, I don't even know where I I can tell you this. Um, well, that movie's all over the place. They're in Thailand a lot of the times. Even the Pittsburgh scenes are Cleveland, Washington State. They're yeah, they're all over the place. I yeah. mean, they had money and they spent that money well. <laughs> they spent that uh, Ch- Chimino Chimmy spent Walking that money them. well. I, 
You know so what? Let me, let me ask me... you now. Let's, oh, yeah, let's, go ahead. Let's, do, let's, it. Let's, do it. We'll, we'll slow it here for everybody. So we did Deer Hunter, and most people, we spoil fucking everything anyway, but most people know it and seen it. So where is this with you? Like, we decided we were going to watch it. Like, obviously, you know, I'm a Chimino guy, so I, I was ready to go. Like, have you seen it a bunch of times? Or oh, yeah. A, oh, okay. So you could. Oh, yeah. Right, this is right. a, this is an all time. This is, you know what? It sounds crazy for to say this, but to me, this is like Back to the Future or Raiders of the Lost Ark or The Fog. This is like anytime it's on, I'm just going to watch it. It, it. That it should that. And, and believe me, I get it. That's a hard one to say because. I can't I'm with you though. It. I constantly watch it. I I, yeah, I couldn't no. say that with Apocalypse Now, right? I couldn't. I, that's not real. I can't do that at any point. Maybe scenes. Oh, okay. but I couldn't. Okay. I couldn't sit at any point and watch Apocalypse just because. I probably um, like Apocalypse better. I, well, I, it's tough to well, say. No, we'll I definitely know because I don't the hate Pittsburgh it. I, I like thing, it. the Pittsburgh thing. Probably puts Deer Hunter above it, but I, I oh, do yeah. love Apocalypse. I've seen it. Yeah, that's another one. There's something about Deer Hunter that I I don't know. I mean, look, it it all go. I'm sure it all goes back to my youth. Like my dad yeah, loved yeah. this fucking movie. And he, me too. And and I remember how he would dis- he would. He would it, he was kind of funny about it because he would always like my dad was weird. He looked at movies like this. They're like comedies to him. <laughs> like he he just thought it was funny as he thought Christopher Walker was so fucking funny in this movie. Yeah, like just my dad he, loved it, too, because he loved it because he's so crazy. And he would always say, oh, he's crazy. Ain't he? Well, he's nuts. Ain't he? You know, <laughs> he just loved how crazy Christopher Walken was in this movie. And, and I'll tell you, they fucking nail Western PA type of people like like yeah. Walken and De Niro just remind me of my dad and uncle so much. And this and the scene when they're in the bar shooting pool at Frankie Valley. Oh God, I love that. That is scene. like so. T- like I remember being little kids, and my brother. I like, love oh. you, baby. That, <laughs> that's like fucking sing along scene ever. That is a dude scene. That is a Yo, man God, scene. Yeah. Like women have, you know, they have bridesmaids where they're all shitting in the bathroom or in the sink or you know, like whatever. Women have their. I mean, maybe that's not every woman's, but most you know, <laughs> women have their. You know, they're they're special. Like, uh, what was the the sisterhood of the traveling panties or whatever the fuck that is? Like, women have their own movies. We get it that make them feel womanly and together. Yeah, no, I, I get it. Yeah, men yeah. have their men Sick bro movies. This movie is one of those man movies, and that scene is one of the great man uh you know bonding you know scenes you know where it's just like yeah this is what dudes do they just fucking play pool drink beer and sing frankie valley (laughs) yeah it's like so a quick plot for everyone if you haven't seen it it's it's, uh, western pa steel workers on like the last day of work there's like a group of like six friends or so three of them one's getting married that night and the other two and all three of them uh, in a few more days are going to be going off to Vietnam. Be so it it's just be like this. Be it fucking now. It's just so much happening in their lives all at once. And they don't even blink. You know, it's like no. nothing to them. They're just going off but because they don't know what's coming. And they go deer hunting. There's two hunting sequences that start at the beginning and not the beginning, but like toward like in the plot point of the beginning and at the end, you know, before Vietnam. And when they come back from Vietnam, really De Niro's psyche, how it changes, yeah. you know, but there is this Russian rule when they're in Vietnam, there's a Russian roulette moment. That is definitely to me, the whole movie, I guess what it's really known for. Oh, yeah. It's fucking oh, yeah. so intense and it's just insane. So then you go through that. They end up seeing that there's this, kind of like a russian roulette group going on in vietnam that that's that's there and all these guys are getting high on heroin and doing russian hey roulette. yeah getting paid to fucking paid blow to each it. other's brains out so uh, they, the war ends they go back home but walken stays behind and and they don't know what happened to christopher walken's character and whose his name is nick and so and then john savage and robert mm-hmm. de niro are the other two and yeah. so the rest of the movie is about those two and what they deal with when they come home from Vietnam and like the aftermath of, of all of that. And then also Christopher Walken, who stays behind, which leads up to one of the coolest, you know, craziest endings ever. Craziest endings ever. You know, yeah. one shot. 
One shot. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and that's kind <laughs> that's of like a the, simple story, though, but that's what it, it is. is. I mean, and here's the thing. It's like it's I mean, you know, we weren't alive during the Vietnam War. So, you know, right. I, our I mean, I, you know, not even and believe me, we are not political dudes on this show. This is not a political show <laughs> for all you listeners out there. So we're not going to get into the politics. But yes, we know there was an Iraqi war and there's a lot of people that that would go around and be like, oh, that was our Vietnam. That was like, no, motherfucker. Yeah, and there I'm not even be, soldiers like, that like, died in Vietnam. Yeah, Vietnam was you got drafted. OK, yeah, yeah. like you didn't <laughs> there, you you didn't have a choice. You know, you had a did choice. Your dad, did your dad go to Vietnam? No, he was he was already uh, too old. He my my oh, dad really? was my dad was born in forty two. So he oh get the fuck he, okay yeah. So and he did get in the military. He got in the air force, but he got in the air force at eighteen. So that's nineteen sixty. Oh shit. So, so he was which which what would time timing, out, right? but he but he got injured, and I'll this is just a complete. This has nothing to do. Well, actually, I'll tell you what. This might have everything to do with the movie. But my dad got injured right out of boot camp and and on a like him and his fellow they were at, you know, what do you call it? Like after, you know, you get stationed somewhere. So yeah. they were stationed in the south somewhere and they went on R&R furlough, whatever, for the weekend to go, mm -hmm. you know, get some pussy. And they went to New Orleans and on the way back, uh, he was asleep in the back seat, and and two of the guys in the back seat with him were fucking around with like a revolver, and it went in, it went off, and he and he just he said he all he knew he saw a flash of light, and he woke up three weeks later in the hospital. He couldn't move his arms and legs. He, they it had shot him through the chest, oh, oh. and it missed his spinal column by millimeters, but it bruised his spinal column so. He couldn't walk for six weeks. He God couldn't, damn. he couldn't, or no, no, I'm sorry. He couldn't move his arms for six weeks. He was paraplegic. I mean, completely just laying in bed, not moving for six weeks. Like, you know, like damn. Tom, Cru Tom Cruise yeah, and, more, yeah. you know, but then it was, since it was a bruise, it healed. So then after six weeks, he could move his arms. And then after like three months or something, he could start moving his legs. He had to learn how to walk again and, piss and write and all that yeah, stuff again that but stuff. but he was able to walk again and stuff like that but point is there's a part of that that i think always stuck with him why he dug these types of movies you know because yeah. he, he, see now he didn't go to war so he was lucky because like to me i mean i i'd ask you this question if you got at if you were given a choice okay you're either gonna go to vietnam and have it, you know, you might get your fucking balls blown off or for like six weeks, you can't move and you get shot in the chest, but you'll get to walk again. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no. I would choose that second choice every day, twice. Yeah, on your dad had good timing on the years, too. Not getting, right. Not getting what about, drafted. Well, what about dad, yours? My yeah. dad was a Marine. And instead of going to Vietnam, he went uh, he, he went to the military prison. So he was in the brig. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what did he do uh, you know i don't remember the someone told me my mom i think told me that he stole like a typewriter i don't know what the fuck oh it my was, god yeah, that's like he, the uh, last detail shit yeah no yeah, that's like your brain. dad was was randy quaid no, he didn't do anything <laughs> and he gets fucking thrown that's in the why brain. i don't know if that's what it was i was like it's probably was some like you know he probably I don't know no crazy you, well i mean if it was something it's like i just know my dad so yeah so he probably <laughs> like so it was definitely a lot i don't know why he would have stole a typewriter i'm like oh. i know but um that was the years but no vietnam was that all of that age range our fathers and uncles and everyone that's the next yeah. generation before us they fucking love the deer hunter oh yeah more than any other movie about vietnam or almost almost yeah. any movie at all during the 70s but that was the movie i all the time and it symbolizes the seventies from like the cast from De Niro and John Cazale and um, John Savage, Chris uh, Walken, yeah, and Meryl Streep. Was Street, it Zun you know? Zunza? Oh, what, yeah. hey, George Zunza <laughs> from Basic Instinct. Yeah, the, the, the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. George Zunza. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, there was definitely like a great cast, and you know, Ritanya Alda. But but yeah, no, it, it's one of those great movies. And when it came out. 
you know, you had such a political climate in Hollywood at the time. And obviously I'm like a Chimino guy. So I read like the biographies and everything I could about it. And when it comes to this movie, have you ever seen the Z channel documentary? We talk about that a lot. Okay. The Z channel doc. They talk about this movie in detail. They talk about it in Chimino's biography, but they were so instrumental with this movie getting to be what it was because nobody was really picking up on it. The reviews were 50, 50 at first. It was still doing the theater run. This is before the Oscars. And Z Channel, which is like a pre-cable station that was in L.A. only, and which is like a, the beginning of before like HBO and everything that, yeah. that came after. It was like playing movies. And they put it out uncut on Z Channel and let it play in Los Angeles on TV for people to see. And that's what got it in like all these – got it talked about for the Oscars and really put it where it was. And because it's he wins the Oscar, he's standing next to uh, like the like the anti-war film, you know, coming home. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, well, and uh, I always love this part about – so – at the so what year what we're talking like 77 78, 78 something like that 78. yeah 78 so when i remember i got one year that for christmas i got from my mom i got this uh academy awards uh the academy awards handbook which basically okay. it was is just like it's just the winners of every year but it was i mean or it was the it was basically a break each year had its own breakdown right so it was like you get all your nominees nominees and everything but then there's little blurbs about Interesting things that that have that transpired either b- leading up to the awards or during the awards or right after, you know, just kind of like tidbits. And okay. for this one, I always this always stuck in my mind is that so this year, 78, the presenter was John Wayne of Best Picture, presenter of Be- Best Picture. And oh. he had to go out and present this movie uh, and and we're talking John, we're talking the Duke, man. Like he was all American. And this is an anti, I mean, you know, I don't want to say it's anti-American, but it's anti-war. And this is not the kind of shit that John Wayne likes. So apparently the whole night backstage, he was pissed. Like over the not, deer hunter. Oh yeah. He was not That's a so fan. Weird. That's he was so weird. not a fan of anti-war. He just was not. He, I mean, you know, he's the I don't dude. even look at it as a, as that much of an anti-war I, film. Actually, that's that know, ending scene which we'll talk about later. Oh, but that's yeah, why I don't think it's that. anti-war at all. But he had to present it as best picture. But but apparently, and this is just out of the you know from what I read. So who knows what's Hollywood lore and myth yeah. and what's real? But apparently, he got so enraged after having to present it because he didn't know it was going to win, but you kind of knew you yeah. always kind of know what's going to win, you know, because yeah. it wins all the other precursors. And he was so enraged, like it was just building and he presented it. And then afterwards, apparently like at one of the parties, he was just completely smashed and ranting. And I mean, like violent, like he was wanting to be, he, I think I want to say, that he either saw Chimino or he saw one of the producers of the movie at one of these parties and tried to pick a fight with him. Wow. And I love that. I love it. I love that. Like John Wayne. (laughs) It's funny because when I was reading Chimino's biography, they were talking about that moment when they won the Oscars and they were saying, which is funny about John Wayne because it's like, they were talking about how this movie was so in the middle and it really was getting flack from both sides, whether it's pro-war or anti-war. So both sides, there were groups that liked it and hated it. And Chimino himself was kind of a, I guess, macho man a little bit, you know, alpha. Yeah. <laughs> so they definitely, I, I thought, always leaned towards more the of a, of a pro-war side or pro-masculinity See, think- side. And then they all had to have, I guess, because they Which, said that Jane Fonda was pissed that she had to be back there with them. And they had to do pictures and all smile together. Was Chimino, was Chimino, was he an immigrant or was he a no, son? No, no, he's him? just, he's just straight Italian. Oh, he's straight up, he's, he's just his straight parents American. may have been. His parents, his parents may have maybe. been. I get the feeling that maybe his parents were or something because most of those immigrant kids, like, they love America. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they. You know, so let me ask you a question too, oh, yeah. because Chimino's Italian. And you think in Western PA is like predominantly Polish and Italian, and especially if you go to like Heritage or whatever. Oh, locks and wops. Yeah, really. That's what it is. And that he always go and they're all Russians and stuff. But the fact that every 
he has this thing because he does it in, in in Heaven's Gate, but he has it. I don't know why he picked Russians, why an Italian guy picked Russians, that that was like the ethnic group that he was going to pick. I never knew why. Did, did you ever do you know anything about you that? You know, I it's to me, I guess I just always I mean, I don't know. Pitts, you know, I don't know that area. I just always assumed that like he was just because he is so detail oriented. I mean, he's like Kubrick in a lot of ways. He's oh, God, so yeah. into and I just always assumed it was because that was the 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 predominant. Because remember that movie, all the uh, all the right moves with Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah. They're all they're the same basic area, and they're yeah, all uh, they're all they're all sort of like Pollocks. And, and yeah, I mean, right. I think yeah. his last name is Georgievich, right? Yeah, Georgievich. Yeah. yeah. So they're all sort of like Russian Pollock kind of. Uh, yeah, Pollocks people. and Russians are the are, yeah, that's around the same. So I can see them picking the Russians. That that, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. But it's just it's it's weird that an Italian didn't go with an Italian. Plus he had De Niro, and oh, you know I was like, ah, damn. I was like, I wonder why he didn't do that. But you know, who but, cares? It's still oh, well. You know, it's I mean, it's in, I mean, it is interesting because it does like you know there is certainly like you know it could also be the religious i mean it could even be down to just the way that that fucking beginning you know like if you haven't seen this anybody out there just so you know this movie is three parts it's a three act play basically it really is your first act is a wedding okay like and the that Godfather wedding too, just this it, grand exact, it is what yeah whole act whole act you're right and that and that wedding scene is so fucking it's beautiful but it's so rich i mean oh, and the I, moment and, when john cazell punches oh his i was just thinking that when he just when he he's just drunk as shit oh, and he God. just smacks the he's like i love it when at first one of the greatest ever one he's of the greatest sitting watching ever. the singer you know the crooner like all yeah, up on his yeah. girl and he's sitting by george zunza and george is is laughing, laughing his ass off him. yeah and he's like and john's like you know Look at it. He's got look at his hands. His hands all over his hands. He's like so pissed. And he gets up. But see, maybe that right there is kind of why he went Russian. Because not that Italians don't beat their women, but because we do. We do. <laughs> but it it's it seems like in Russian in the culture, you know, especially like the, the that old school Russian culture, it's more of an accepted thing. Like, you know, you, you, oh, yeah, maybe like you follow Streep's me on that. Dad, Meryl Streep's dad, that drunk when he it just beat, her before beat the wedding. smacks the shit oh, out that of her. Fucking God, that was so hard to watch because she's trying to I'd like if you're from Western PA, you almost know her. You know, you're like, oh, I know who she is. You know, I'm sure you do, too, where you're from. And it's just like, <laughs> oh, no, you know, you know that dad, you know that it's just like, oh, yeah, fuck. those are those are the good dads. Those are the ones that <laughs> you want to date their daughters ago, because, know, you know, you right? can get away with anything. <laughs> I was watching the um, I was listening to the audio commentary with one of. I don't know. One of the DVDs blew. I don't know. It's been out forever now. So somewhere along the line. So I was listening to the audio commentary with Vilmo Zygmunt and who shot the film and another guy who was interviewing him who just didn't really seem like he knew production that well. And th that part happened when she gets smacked by her dad. And the guy was like, oh, I hope you didn't have to do that more than once. And then Vilmus was like, it's fake. It, she didn't really get hit there. And he's like, I know, but it really looked real. And then everybody smacks her like a second time. And the guy who's in her is like, no, that can't be. And Vilmos, you, know, you could tell, is getting frustrated because there's a lot of hard things to watch in this movie. There but are. it's like, he's like, it's all fake, though. Everybody's, you know, no one, no one got hurt here. We're OK. It's just funny to hear it. Here are two different people talk about it. But, <laughs> but the actors well, did their own stunts for the most part. And it's wild, you know, it's in Vietnam. But yeah, the the dad and the Meryl Streep stuff, it's it's crazy. So the, that so well, you know, but we're going all over the place. This is I know so hard we to are. Talk we're, about, we're, you know? we're so yeah. There's we're like so kids much in the candy store right now. I know it, it. So it's like so when he smacks her, for example, like when he smacks Meryl. I mean, here here's the first thing. Rewatching it again last night, and I haven't. I mean, it hasn't been that long since I saw it. But I mean, it it is sitting through it the 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 whole way. I probably, you know, it's probably been six months, maybe you know, since I really sat down yeah. and watched it again. Yeah. And uh, and and here's the thing. Yeah, I'm the same. I watch like once or twice a year. Yeah, it's 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 just a you know, it it literally is like 
it's it's like back to the future it's like i kind of feel empty if i don't or halloween if i don't see it it feels kind of like well I haven't done myself just yeah it's so, like the godfather light to me it's like it's just it is. one rung under it you know it is it's 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 almost all it is is like it's just a little too too much of a downer a little too the much third of a downer. act i'm not yeah. so you're talking about it being three acts and yeah. you it started with them at the wedding and then it goes to vietnam and then the third part is like the aftermath slash looking for christopher walken so you do go back to vietnam a couple times except for going back to vietnam that whole part with de niro coming home and trying to get back trying to hook up with you know meryl streep i was like ugh. You know, yeah, uh, that, those the, parts were kind of that's boring. a good that's a good uh, right there. What you're like, again, yeah, we're we're kind of going all over. But that, yeah, so I always thought that I mean, the thing with De Niro is he's not a at least for me, he's not I don't know what it is because he's so intense. He's so whatever. It's it's always a little off putting when he's getting getting down with a lady. You know what I mean? But <laughs> but what, what uh, you know, I like Pacino. He just looks like he's going to, you know, he's looking to fuck everything. But yeah, no, but, but De Niro's an odd, odd guy. But he's then an odd Michael guy. The character he plays is an odd guy. It's too, odd. So it's like That's double down thing. on it. Yeah, it's a double down because he's so weird. And then, I mean, you know, it's, it's like sometimes he's funny. Sometimes he's like one of the boys, you know, and they're in the in the bar drinking. He's cool. But then he's weird. Obviously, Vietnam, he's weird. But like weird the, the deer hunting, he's weird. You know, it's yeah. The, the whole crazy. thing with with the bullet, like this is this. This is this. <laughs> that is that. It's like and, and see again, th these are just this is what makes the movie br movie brilliant is that of all those characters, they're so well put together because the only person that can talk to uh, Michael, to De Niro, is mm -hmm. Christopher Walken. He's yeah. the only one when John Cazale uh, doesn't have his boots and he's like, can I buy your boots? Can't buy your boots. Yeah. I'm yeah. <laughs> and uh, and and nobody's he's like pointing uh, the gun at everybody, too. Yeah, he's pointing the gun at everybody. <laughs> and, and he's like, can I buy your boots? And then and then, you know, you get George Sons is like, yeah, you take mine. And and De Niro's Mikey. Mike is like, no, no. I said, yeah, no. He's like, I meant you this, Dan. No, Stan. It. No, no stand, you know, and everybody's trying to give him boots. And finally you have Walken who th throws the boots. He goes, Stan, here you go. You know, and yeah. he, and then Christopher Walken looks at De Niro and he's just like, what's the matter with you? Right. And that's all, all right. he had to say. And he says it so just, it makes it's, he's the character that makes sense. Like to me, Christopher Walken is the heartbeat of that movie. I he's agree, yeah. the guy, the, you know, he's the, for lack of a better term, he's the Oscar for too. Is well, yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. That's the reason is because he's the one that you know. Even though Mike keeps it together, right? Mike is the is he's is the, the one star. that yeah. he's the star, and everybody can count on him. All those guys can count on him to save yeah. them to get them out. But if it wasn't for, like you know, Nikki Christopher Walken is the one is the one character in there. He, he's the you know, he's the pretty one. He's the one that can dance. He's the one that, and he's nice and he's, and he's very affable and he's, and he's, he, and when he says the trees, you know, I like the trees. That's what I think. Yeah. That's what I like is <laughs> I like going up there and see the trees. He's the, you know, it. it's without, you don't even have to say it. It's just, he's the, uh, the sweet one, you know, he's the yeah. one that, that you want to be friends with because he's going to take, you know, he's always going to be there for you. He's always going to be the fun one, never going to get super, you know. And, and I, I just love that about the movie because I, yeah, I do too. I do you too. know, because if you had the whole movie and you didn't have him and it was just really about De Niro, it'd be like, well, he's not a bad guy, but man, he's an asshole. Yeah. He's just a complex character, you yes. know, and it feels like that. That was the one Chimino based himself most off of. Was oh, you know, you that's a tell. good way. That's you know? a good point. Yeah. that's. Yeah. And even though there was a lot of writers involved, Derek Washburn was the main writer. And if the thing I, about Chimino, he's very petty with credits. So if you wrote for Chimino, you there's like a high percentage chance you were just going to be, you know, just told to, you know, actually, they right some of them have been told to fuck off later. Like, okay, you're done, you know, and that's it. And they don't even get credit and you have to fight for credit and everything. So there was a lot of crap involved with that one, but it, they, they, all the writers had a fight to get their names on there. Did, let, let me ask you this. 
like, oh, th- what did you, what do you think of Streep? What do you think of Meryl Streep? I mean, let me ask it like this. Go ahead. Have you ever been, have you ever thought she was like smoking? I think no, but I think this is the prettiest. I, I like her in this. I think she's pretty in me this. Too. I thought she was pretty, uh, she was good looking in Still of the Night. If you've ever seen that movie. No, I never saw uh, it. With Roy Scheider. I thought, she, but I think in this one, and she was dating John Cazale at the time. Yeah. And what was interesting oh, was, fuck. you know, and watching the commentary, they got this all wrong. I'm listening to it and I was freaking out and I was listening to this last, but at least from what I've always known was, you know, John Cazale was involved. Obviously they had a hard time giving an insurance bond on him because right, he was dying right. of lung cancer and he ended yeah. up dying six months after production. But um, he was with Meryl Streep and he was the one that got her cast in it. Yeah. And yeah that's what like, I, that's how, that's what I always heard. Yeah. No, th- I, I was watching a commentary and they were like, Oh, Meryl Streep was part of the click. And then she got John involved. And I was like, Oh, oh okay, that's not. Oh my God. Who yeah. said that? I think Who's... it was Bill Sigma, but he's the, he's a DP and he was like, I will own... whoop his ass. Okay. Now, but... I will <laughs> whoop Bill Mose. Is he dead? He's dead now. Oh, I would whoop his corpse, his parents. His kids. <laughs> uh, um, yes. No, no, he's great. I love uh, him. No, yeah, of course. I love but but um, I mean, like, did yeah, you ever, she, um, but no, she, I, I, I really, I, love her in this movie i think i know she's been i know she's Catherine hepburn of our generation or whatever but i think it might have been her first major role but to me still to this day it's her best film best performance she's ever done listen i i i won't even try to disagree with that because she's just a stated character actress actually i can't say that i've seen every my grandmother was a huge meryl streep fan but so she, I'm sure she, if she was still alive, she would be like, oh, did you see this? Did you see mm-hmm, that? You know, mm-hmm. I have not seen a ton of Meryl Streep movies. I've seen this, obviously. I've seen Kramer versus Kramer. Yeah. I've seen. Um, Silkwood. Never saw that. <laughs> you know, I saw, you know what I saw? I saw, well, and I saw Adaptation and I oh, thought she was yeah. really, really fun in that. Right. And yeah. so, yeah, no, I really uh, like Meryl Streep a lot, though, and, and a lot of her other movies besides besides this. But, yeah, I'm, I, I love this. I heard this. Well, and, and, and the thing is, is like I haven't seen her in a ton. Like I said, you yeah. know, just a handful. But she, to me, is smoking in this like she's this is the <laughs> movie that I think she is like, man, I would absolutely i mean i can see yeah, why you can see why they're fighting yeah yeah and and the other thing is like and it's crazy bringing up i mean i'm glad that you did this because this is i totally wanted to get into this with john Cazal. yeah is, i want to talk uh, about him for a moment we got to give this guy his due every movie he's in like you were talking about with with the heartbeat being christopher walken's nick and and michael might be the lead this is John Cazale's show, though. Every fucking movie he's in is his show, you know? And I'm like, he, to me, he's still the scene stealer of the movie. Oh, yeah. When he's looking in the reflection at himself. <laughs> well, okay, so so I wanted, I think we've talked about this, but if we haven't on the air, maybe we've talked about it personally. Have you ever seen the Cazal documentary? Oh, yeah, I love uh, it. Uh, uh, what, uh, I knew, I it, knew was it was you. you. Yeah. yeah, I love that documentary. That was one of the best... Like I had, I j- all I knew was that like, oh, it's about jo- this guy John Cazale, and I've seen him in yeah. a, in all the, you know, he didn't do a lot, and I saw it, and I was just floored with it. I, I wish it was it. longer though. Remember, it was only forty five oh, minutes. I know it's it's kind of like the John or the Joe Spinell documentary. It's very yeah, short, yeah. you know. It's too short, yeah. It's too short. It's like you really need to dive more into like you know who he was, but. I what a great I, actor career. What a great you know? actor. I and mean, he brings from, that movie up a notch. Definitely. Oh, he absolutely. And there's the the scene in the documentary where they point out it's like Sam Rockwell talking about. I just love. He's like, I just love that moment where they're at the uh, at the wedding and they're about to take the picture and, uh, and they're all lined up and he's the one that looks down and like sees that he left his uh, his zipper down and zips it up. <laughs> yep, and it's like yeah. <laughs> that's a great that's a great moment. That's his character. He is so into it. People talk about. De Niro being completely in his character at all times. Well, he got that from John Cazal. Yeah, Casino says that too. He said everything he learned from acting, he learned from John Cazal. And I yeah. was like, that's fucking great. John Cazal was brought in because of De Niro. 
because yeah, De Niro yeah. was his friend and knew and, that and Chimino knew. Getting, oh, and Chimino, getting yeah, Fredo I mean, Corleone, they, they yeah. all knew that, like, you know, and they knew he was sick and they knew that, like, this is probably his last good payday. Yeah. And, you know, they're taking care of their friend, but they also know he's great. He's, yeah, I mean, and you he's know, not it's the gonna... only story I ever heard about him, like winning somebody over is Sidney Lumet talks about how he wasn't sure about him for Dog Day because he only knew him as Fredo. And Pacino is like, no, no, we got to get John to play the, the part. I love that. Yeah. I... Did you ever hear a story? How he's like, he came in an audition and he was like, within like five words, he's like, oh, he had the part. He was just fucking psychotic. And now, he's like, that never I did... knew. now that I didn't see. I didn't know. Well, in the documentary, what I knew is that when Pacino is talking about how they're they were filming Dog Day, and there's the scene where the great scene where Cazal is like, uh, uh, or or there, him and Pacino oh, are talking. Yeah. He's, where are we going? He's like, uh, you know, blah 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 in Montana. He's like, uh, like Wyoming. He's like, yeah, anywhere well, I, you want to go in the Wyoming's, world. What, what Wyoming's country? that a country? You know, <laughs> and 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 you've got when they're doing like between takes, Cazal is. Uh, questioning is asking questions of of Lumet of, of Sydney and and asking him like about the character and he keeps saying why and Sumet, uh, Sydney would be like well because of this and they said well why well because of this and, and after like you know twenty moments of that twenty questions of why 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 finally Sydney Lumet is like because I said so <laughs> and and John Cazal says. Oh, well, you should have told me that. And and it's like, I love it that it's it's like he was just toying with Sydney. Like he was just, you know, but, it, you know, I digress. That's fucking he, great, though. Al was fantastic. And he also said in that documentary, going back to Merrill, he said, uh, you know, Pacino was saying that John told him one day, he said, guess what? I just met the greatest actress I've uh, in the yeah. world. And he's talking about Meryl and mm -hmm. they started dating and John knew that that tells you how good of an actor he was because he knew what right. was good and he knew she was great and she had done nothing. Yeah. And so he yeah, like he brought her in. He got you know, he knew she was the goods. And she brought yeah, she she was those girls were perfect for that area because perfect. that was like it was funny watching as a little kid. Like my dad reminded me of the, those guys, but the women reminded me of my mom and all those women. <laughs> and they really just nailed it, you know, just like that, you know, just afraid of of, of life and, and and your surroundings. And I don't know. And deer hunting is such a big thing there, which is such a great piece for the movie to to go off of, you know, how how they they could kill at the beginning, then Vietnam, and then you, you, you couldn't kill. Couldn't Michael couldn't kill couldn't when he came it. back. Let's talk about him for a second, De Niro, yes. in it because that is the arc of the film, right? You know, it's like I don't. Yes, we'll we'll, we'll spoil it with the whole ending. Oh and yeah, everything. But he co so he goes to Vietnam, and he was a little bit weird at the beginning. Remember, uh, they see him in Vietnam, and and John Savage and uh, Christopher Walken see him in Vietnam. They're like Mikey, Mikey, and he kind of just walks past them and doesn't even say anything. Doesn't even he doesn't even. Him. It's like yeah, he's like in a different. That's that <laughs> moment right there was always a weird moment for me because it's like yeah. he it's it's like he's so you know wrapped up in the he doesn't even recognize who they are. And then you but, know, and, and then whenever Mikey's in uh, is in that little uh, 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 John Savage is in um uh locked away like you know and and getting chewed up on the rats and everything oh, yeah. for the Russian let part. Remember he was like, oh he he's done he's done uh, he can't be saved. And Christopher, oh Rock yeah, was like, yeah, what are you talking about? So uh, it was you know the way he acted and. You know them do, doing the the gun at 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 John Cazell at the end at at the cabin when they go deer oh, yeah. hunting. Oh, yeah. Just these extremes, his care, and I know what that's from. Obviously, the effects of war and everything. But he was a complicated guy before they left when he went streaking down down the road. Yeah, he he, just, he was, you know, and and you know, I mean, John Cazell always thought you. Know, toying with him at the beginning kind of push him saying you know what? I, I must have fixed him up a million times i must have yeah. fixed him up a million yeah. times you know why i don't think you do anything like it because you're a so, yeah, yeah like like they and, so ever De Niro is just looking at him grinning you know it doesn't even affect him at all <laughs> yeah it doesn't even but there is that thing where he yeah i mean he loves it's complicated because he loves meryl streep but 
it, so that keeps him yes. from like really wanting to dive into but like other women back and saving trying to bring because that's still his best friend so he keeps going back to vietnam because yeah. christopher walken's still there and he yeah. finds out that he's being shot up with heroin and doing the russian yeah. roulette stuff so now he's trying to find him and he also finds out that he's sending money to john savage's character who's married to Ratanya alda alda that's the wedding at the beginning but those two are are, are broken up by this time you remember uh mike's in that yeah uh, uh, i, I mean called him mike i'm sorry but uh um uh stevie stevie uh, stevie yeah i'm sorry stevie yeah easy to overlook him in this but you can't yeah. because he's the youth if christopher walken is the heart uh john Cazal is the you know, sort of the spirit of the movie, maybe, maybe that's, yeah, I don't know if that's the right terminology, but, and if De Niro is the lead, you know, he's the complications of all this. Well, the youth is absolutely John Savage. He's the guy, he's the youngest of one. He's the one that like, you know, I mean, uh, uh, the, uh, what's her act, what's the actress's name that plays his wife? Oh, Ratanya Alda. Ratanya. Yeah. Well, and you find out that like, yeah, she's she's she, it's not his kid that she's pregnant with. You know what I mean? <laughs> she she was sleeping around and she yeah, got pregnant yeah. with somebody else, but he doesn't care. He just loves her. He's very idealistic. And he's the he's idealist. Also, the um, you know, you talk about being the, within that group. I'm sorry. What did you say? He, yeah, he was well, the, the, the youth the, or the, the youth, idealism, the you know, he, but, and he's also in the dynamic of of war. You have brains brawn and then like the the weak one out of the three that's kind of like their that becomes their dynamic once they get to vietnam you know christopher walken's obviously the one who's trying to be smart but it's de niro who's fucking gonna be the one who gets him through it shooting you yeah. know and everything and and then you have the one who's dependent on them the whole time remember he's like mikey mikey you know and it's yeah. another weird thing you know you think de niro is just gonna leave him but he goes and saves him throws him on his shoulder and fucking like it's just insane like how you just can't figure out the Mike character, Robert De Niro. I cannot figure you him can't. out. Like he's like heroic, you, you can't. but yeah, it's. I'd love to like talk to him about that. Oh, you wouldn't get anything from him, but I would oh no, no, out. he'd be like, well, it was just a, yeah, <laughs> he'd be like, go fuck yourself. But like even in the book, it was very you know the only thing the writer really knew was after Chimino got the original script, he certainly machoed it up for Robert De Niro's character, like. <laughs> Just little things in the dialogue. Um, For example, remember when they're like, oh, you're still talking about one shot. The original script just says something like, you know, just commenting on one shot. But then when Chimino got it, remember, he's like, yeah, two's for pussies. You know, it's just like (laughs) just everything's like that with Chimino. It's just got to be a little extra tough. And And you know, it's funny. Look at it as anti-war. There's no way. Chimino is a fucking gunslinger. It's funny because last night watching and that was the first time I ever noticed him saying two for pussies because that scene is such a gentle scene in the trailer he's like you know these other guys i love them but you know i can't talk to him it's uh, you you you're the only one nikki yeah. you know and um and remember when he know, sneaks out real fast whenever meryl streep shows oh yeah because he doesn't want to it's so that weird. weird he doesn't he loves her and he, but he also doesn't want to get in the way between yeah her he and will De not Niro. get in the way of uh, yeah. yeah but now i i before we go further because there's so much I do want to go back. I, I got to go. Oh, we got to go back to everywhere, John, everywhere. John Savage again. I wanted to Please. just say that. I mean, he, you know, obviously he's he's the one getting married. He's the one that's like got the the hope and the dream or, you know, and the scene with with uh, we've already discussed the scene with them at the bar is great. And they're all drunk and they're all singing. And watching then the Steelers watching the Steelers. And then it, and when they go to war, he's the one that he can't quite keep the gun on his head like he oh, when man, he pulls the trigger watch. it's not it's he's so broken and so weak in a sense that his the the gun he just he's dropping the gun as it fires so it just scathes his head yeah and the only reason that he can't uh that he breaks his legs forever that he's got you know no legs at the end is because he but because he's the one he he he's the one that drops from the truck. Tro- he can't oh, hold that on. Was hard to watch. He drops oh, from the man, chopper, you know, chopper. But and when I'm he's sorry, real quick, that was one of oh, the yeah. f- only moments of the movie where there were stunt be- stuntmen, where when they were oh, hanging from the, the drop, the dropping from the yeah, yeah, which is that has to be because that's but so that shot though the shot of them looking down and it's them holding on. That's really them. That's really know? them. Oh, it's wow. a fucking tough movie. You know, that's and a they tough. Did it. 
Yeah. And, and and I'll tell you this, I got a story. I know I've told this story before, but I'll just say it again because if there's never been a more appropriate time than right now, I'll make it as like super quick, 10 no, seconds, tell it. 30 seconds, whatever. So uh, when I first moved out to LA 15 years ago, I got a job hosting birthday parties up in Calabasas. And it was just, you know, parents would bring their kids and whoever the birthday girl or boy was, they would bring all their kids, all their friends and we would shoot little music video parties on a blue screen soundstage, small okay. little place. And whatever the hit song was, whatever song they wanted to do, they would lip sync and I would I would host. And I was very cheesy and I was very like, oh, right. Now we got the you know, who's the next group coming up singing this uh, great uh, Miley Cyrus, uh, you know, uh, uh, party in the USA or you know, whatever the song was. Well, one day. And, and the parents would come too. Well, mm -hmm. one day, whoever the the birthday girl or boy was, one of their friends brought or or was was chaperoned there by John Savage, and I was oh, like, okay. "Holy fuck!" <laughs> now, what was funny is I knew John Savage, and I knew him. Obviously, I knew him from Deer Hunter. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really. I knew him from Deer Hunter and El Sal and, and Salvador. Salvador, and then the, do the right thing. And do the right thing. Yeah, those are really the only ones, but but that's all you need. And uh, and my bosses were like, uh, at, when they knew it was him, they pulled me aside at one point and they were like, hey, that's John Savage. You know what he was in, right? And I, and, and I said, I might have said deer hunt, but they were like, the onion field. And I had never even heard of the onion field. So oh, I had, so I ended shit. up like reading it and watching it. And he was great in it. But anyway, at that party, you know, I do the whole thing. I'm like full of energy, a ball of energy. Get to, you know, every, all the kids are having fun. At the end of the party, all the kids are leaving with their parents and blah, blah, blah. And John Savage catches me as I'm walk, as I'm running up the stairs to like, you know, grab something. And he's like, hey, man. And I was like, oh, hey. And he was like, you know, I just want to tell you, I respect what you do. You know, or he, he said it, something <laughs> like that. You know, I, I respect what you, he was like, you know, just being very kind. And I was like. Brother, I respect what you do, you know, like, uh, yeah. uh, you know, however that was worded. But I knew and I wish I could have talked to him because I would have been like, what in the fuck? Like, all I want to know is all the Viet, all that, all that scene. That's what I want to know is what the fuck happened? How intense was it? holding on to the chopper putting the guns to your head the screaming the moan oh. the cry like like that scene rats to crawling me, on you rats crawling on you just holding that scene to me the russian roulette vietnam scene i don't care what anyone says politics wise i know what the the meaning the theme thematically i know what the scene, scene is trying to say blah 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 i don't give a fuck just the execution of that by mm -hmm. everybody involved. I mean, crew, cast, everything yeah, is, and you said it earlier, this is the scene. This is one of the greatest scenes of all time in cinema. Oh, yeah. It's just one of the most famous Im images, too, with uh, De Niro with the gun to his head. De Niro it was the poster. with the gun to his head, with with the, the you know, I mean, I you know, and that fucking good. You know, that 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 fucking uh, uh, whoever they got, because I remember, you know, I've read the stories about, you know, that the the actor that they got to be the main, you know, oh, the, oh, the, Viet oh, the, Kong, the Vietnam, yeah, 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 yeah. He, that he was like, he really did not like Americans like he was a legit racist dude you oh, know what i mean <laughs> and 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 that was exactly what they wanted and they and, oh, yeah. and it was, he was it was effective. i have to i have to imagine all those hits when he's slapping them yeah, yeah. i'd say that 95 percent of that shit was real probably so i i and, I, and when, I, you know, <laughs> when de niro just oh you motherfucker. oh yeah yeah he you, just, you motherfucker you motherfucker I was i'm like, gonna God kill damn. you you fucking like in that you room, know I, I would feel safe. I'm like, De Niro is going to get me the fuck out of here right now, you know? Because It makes oh. you, it, like that scene, I don't care. I don't care pumped, what this actually. sounds like. It makes you, as an as an American, you know, it makes you want to, like, be De Niro. Like, not be <laughs> De Niro, but be in his place. Like, yeah, that's how I would be. Yeah, you fucking yeah. touched me one time. Yeah, one you, more you time, motherfucker. 
That's you know, it's it's so and and uh and when they bust out and Christopher Walken is like just smashing that dude's face at the oh, end because yeah, everybody's yeah. dead. And he just keeps huh, yeah, huh. He's getting it out. Well, all right. So if we want to jump around, we'll just keep jumping around because that's <laughs> that's what we do. You but I to. want to talk then and get this going with this ending. So if we're gonna oh, spoil yes. by now, yeah, everyone knows this is what we do. So the ending, De Niro finally gets finds walking in vietnam yeah. and they he doesn't recognize him because he's so fucking you know fucked up you know been shot up. up he sees his arm there's tons of needle marks in his arm Hot. De Niro's all fucked up like nicky it's me it's me and then all of a sudden he's like one shot that's what uh nick says back to him and De, Niro, yeah. and De Niro's like yeah one shot and all of a sudden he puts the gun to his head and blows his head off right in front yeah. of everyone De Niro is crying it's that i remember <laughs> as a little kid it was the most devastating movie death as a kid, I'm pretty yeah. sure I re- yeah. I just remember uh, my my dad always talking about it. The movie where Christopher Walken dies at the end always freaked me out. The whole Russian roulette stuff. But bring, they come back to America, and the ending is you oh know, yeah. sort of those I don't want to say ambiguous or whatever. You know, it's one of those endings where it's it is well, it's 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 yeah. I don't want to say that's what it is, but it, it's it, not ambiguous. They're just trying. What are they saying? They're yeah, you don't know what they're saying. Trying, but, yeah. but what happens is it's it's post funeral. They're all sitting in that bar at the end. They're all it's the first time that uh, you know John Savage is in there or Tanya Alda, right, his wife, right. in years. Like everyone's together. They're not happy, but everyone's really civil. And then out of nowhere, Meryl Streep busts into "God Bless America," and then a few oh, moments later, America. they all join in. And they all sing it together. And as soon as they get right. done, De Niro smiles and says, here's to Nick. They all say, here's to Nick. And that's how the movie ends. Yes. And it's a tough way to think. Like, is, you know, is it one of those pro-America, like, no matter what, I, we still love our country, regardless of losing someone like this? Like, it's it can be looked at so many ways. But that's there, why it, it can the, be, a lot of left-wing What do you think? Thought, what do you think? I think it's a, I think it's a pro-American I don't want to say pro war because you had a couple, you know, left wing, openly left wing people in it. I mean, I don't right. want to say it's like like John Wayne right wing, but it's certainly macho and it glor it doesn't glorify war, but it certainly glorifies like manhood, you know. Well, and- it's it. Well, look, I mean, listen, that like we just said in that scene. I mean, any guy who, I mean, I don't want to say any guy because there's a lot of pussies out there, but <laughs> but most men, you know, with balls and a big old dick when they see that fucking scene oh yeah. like i said they want to be all, yeah, like they you, they you, get right. pissed like if you hit me like that if you keep hitting me like that that's what's gonna happen because yeah, right you get driven to a place where you're like so, i don't care if, who does it's, it's the answer though i'm sorry i i was no go ahead off, though, but to say the, the the say what i think it really is is it's hard to call because chimino is it really is like an artist who is an epic movie and it's hard to call someone like that you know uh, he's trying to do a pro-war message so he right. definitely is not pro-war but it is definitely not anti-war and it's pro-american and that's the difference between this yeah. and most of the other anti-war films. Is it's still very pro-American, which is that's it's what Chimino pro- was. Yeah. Anyways, it's it's answer. it no. Uh, listen, I I I'll, I'll say this. This is a bold statement. I Damn. the only thing about this movie that I cannot stand is them singing at the end. I've ne- I and and here's the thing. I I'm kind of with you on this. Actually, it, it's it's not that like. It's interesting. It's not that it's like stupid or something. It's it's interesting. Yeah. It is. But I just, I don't, for me personally, it's such a devastating moment. Like even watching it again last night, because I knew it was coming, you know, it's like, I know what's going to happen. Yeah. But I'm watching it and I'm just thinking, you know what? In a sense, like after the, okay, so Godfather 2, at the end of it, we get the scene where everybody's at the, uh, you know, he's alone, yeah, right? But we get uh, a flashback to everybody, and then what happens at the end of it? He's back to being alone. You know, it's like he's alone. Then he flashbacks to the the one happy the happy time before all shit went down, and and everybody's eating at the table is like, you know, you know those, you, you know, hey, hey, don't you fucking hear, hear you know whatever or no yeah, not that, yeah, but you know yeah, he's he's right, it's Paulie right. and everybody, and then he ends up alone, 
in this, they are not alone. They've got each other. That's awesome. Yeah. Like that's, that's to me, like, it's really sad because their heartbeat is gone, but they do have each other. And even with Stevie and his, and he's a freak now, he's got no legs and, you know, and all this stuff and Mike is fucked up and, you know, yeah. but they're, but they got th each other. They got each other, but, and I do think in the end, it did bring them together. You but brought them I, together. I don't think. De Niro got with Meryl Streep. I don't think uh, yeah, I, John Savage got back with his with Ratanya Alda. I I I I do. You don't th think he did? No. In fact, I think probably George Zinza's character probably turned into the heartbeat <laughs> at the end. You know. Well, he, he now was. that's a good. That he is was a little bit overly that, emotional within his friends the whole movie anyway. You well, know, he's a he's teddy. Always... He's one of you know those fat dudes that are just teddy bears. You know, we all know him. Like we know, like some of you chicks out there love like you. You go and get you some of them teddy bear loving too. Like yeah, some and, of that, he is. He really he's is. The, that, that, he's that the fat dude. Right yeah, and he can, oh, That's a great. One of the great He's, moments of the movie he, when he plays the piano i love that scene and watching it again last night i thought like god i love this moment because even john could i mean so much about that moment but the fact that he plays it and it's such a beautiful you know i mean he's he you know j just talking his character yeah you get like okay his parents you know from an early age made him learn piano and blah 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 you know and he just knows how to do it he doesn't give a fuck about it you know his parents you know, made him do it as he grew up and he was just like, whatever. But at, at the, certain times it was a perfect thing for this character to do. And and this was the greatest moment when they're about to leave. And he plays this great little, I don't know what you call that little piece, a little sonata, whatever the fuck it is. Right to Vietnam. After and it cuts right to Vietnam, cuts, you know, greatest smash. Cut. And, but I love that moment because it does show that he's the one that there's a class about his character and that, also represents the close-up of a him singing with the choir during the wedding. Yeah, <laughs> see, yeah, he's the he's the uh, he's the artistic one, right? He's yeah, the one, yeah, but he yeah. but he is the one that he represents. Their they're not just. I feel like he keep the click together though. Yeah, he's the he's got the bar. They all come to the bar, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. he's the one that is, and he you know, and um, so I I dig what you're saying. I think he's he's the one that's going to keep them. Yeah, you know, he's going to have a heart attack in an early age. We know that. Yeah, him, definitely. Him and, and Axel, that fucking now uh, Axel. Gorilla. Axel is a non-actor local who right. when they were out the locate. Okay, oh, you knew that. Okay, yeah, they were location well, scouting I, I, in the well, Nero. No, said, no, I didn't know that. I actually, I you go ahead, go ahead. Go oh ahead. no, I was just I, I've seen it in a couple uh um you know Deer Hunter retrospective things, but when I was reading the, the Chimino book. They were just saying when they were location scouting, he was just such a character. And De Niro was like, you got to cast this guy. And was that it? was that was just basically it. Was he a real football player, though? Like, uh, I don't know if he was I a football player. He was just a he was just, he was a, just local, a big fucking dude. A big dude. Yeah. I mean, he's that a big it. that's a big like like I always you know what? And, and I'm just sort of. I just thought that's this. his only movie. It's the only thing he's ever done was Deer Hunter. OK, so right there, like. I, you know, I think I all, I think my, even my dad, I think it's one of those things that your dad tells you when you're young and you just believe that that's true. I think my dad, when I was a kid said, oh, you know, he was really a kicker, you know, or he was really oh, a player yeah, for football. Yeah. Cause they say our he was. Fed us yeah. Our, yeah we they, they tell us bullshit that I still believe like, you know, like uh, uh, women ain't nothing, you know, <laughs> <laughs> shit like that. You know what's that, messed that, up though about our our dads with our with with watching movies that fuck people like us up. Our dads had the craziest one eighty of movie taste, but they were all within the same canon almost. For example, like like they'll watch great movies like The Deer Hunter and Raging Bull and stuff like that, but within like the same watching you'll be watching uh like the next movie will turn into like uh, death wish part three with bronson <laughs> or or the evil that met or uh, you know the, yes the, yes like chuck norris or something fucking yes. crazy you know it's like well death i mean I don't, I don't uh, uh, no that's exactly right my dad i mean yeah you will we'll, we'll you know deer hunter followed by the good the guys were a black or some shit <laughs> Yeah, maniac with Joe Spinell or something. Yeah, you know, what I mean, yeah, like, bizarre like taste. they they had this bizarre taste, and so then, but it's still like this macho alpha 
like, you know, Italian style type of film, you know? Here's the thing. It's like all Italians oh, love the deer hunter. Oh, yeah. And, and that's and and I think it's I mean, because it, it's not just a De Niro thing. It's like because he's the only Don Cazelle and Tamino directed. So was it? Oh, yeah. It oh, like you're it. right. You're and right. Western you know what? You're PA, right. Italians just love that shit. You know, it's. Yeah. But Deer Hunter, I mean, Deer Hunter is one of those things, like I said, I mean, well, let's go back to the ending, because I, I think that that's an important part that that we got to like it's. If you were to ask me on the spot, do I think that this movie, because like the way you, let me just kind of paraphrase what you said. The way you saw the ending is that it's not anti-American for sure. No. It's it's definitely pro-American. It might be, um, it's not pro-war, but it might be, you know, there might be hints of anti-war or at least anti-Vietnam. Sure, you know, hence, it's like, hence. and that's it. And I think that's a, an important, like, I think that's an important uh, part. It It's like each war is its own war, you know. But like, remember when they're in the bar during the wedding and that Vietnam soldier come, I mean, the, the, the Marine. Oh, my God. In, oh, my God. He's like, you just it. brought up what I wanted to bring up. Oh, shit. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Now. I'm okay. Fine. No, Go this ahead. is perfect. This is perfect. I'm glad you brought this up. All right. <laughs> so before I watched Deer Hunter, I had texted you. I said. We were so everybody out there. We were going to do Naked Cage, which we will do. We will, which we is women that. in prison, which is where they belong, doing the things they deserve and need <laughs> to be done. But before we get to that episode, I just I started watching. And I was like, you know, I'm fucking watching. I'm watching Deer Hunter. I gotta watch. You know, and before I had put on Deer Hunter, I was uh, uh, scrolling too because right now Tubi is hot. It's summertime, and they've got everything they've got mm. so many great titles on right now yeah and oh uh, and one of the titles that i put on first was uh the it's the seek it's the direct sequel to dirty harry so it's the vigilante cops and blah 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 and he gets a black david partner soul. david soul right yeah uh wh- who's the other guy uh kip niven and robert aldrich robert yes uh, aldrich yeah 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 but there's oh, a and Tim sc- Matheson too. It oh, and Tim, Ma- yeah, you, yeah, fuck, you're right. Like th- those four, it's crazy. Just, how I those, love that one. Uh, that with those four, like they were all fucking good. They, yeah. I was like, damn, I like every part one two of these. A lot actually. Hal Holbrook is such a son of a bitch. Oh, right? but uh, I love him in that one. But yeah. uh, but in that one, he gets uh, so Dirty Harry gets a black partner, and I can't remember the actor. He's been he's been in a lot of yeah. stuff. He's done a ton of yeah. stuff. But he gets a black partner and there's this scene where they're going to they go to a um like a convenience store because it's been robbed several times. And they they suspected that, like, the same robbers are going to come back or some shit like that. Anyway, they're there at the convenience store and they've got the black partner is behind the counter. He's like the bait and yeah. Dirty Harry is, you know, behind the uh, reverse window or, or mirror or whatever. You know, and he sees these. You know, the bad guys come in. He's like, there's a few there's a couple of salty looking dudes. And one of the bad guys that comes in, he ends up having a great little moment where he throws the when they start robbing the store, he throws the kid to the side. Mm -hmm. That dude is the guy, the sergeant from Deer Hunter that says, fuck it. At the end of the bar, the the shell shot to Sergeant. And I was like, I saw, and that was the first time I connected the two. And it was only because I had seen them back to back. So I had just seen Enforcer, that scene. And then I started watching Deer Hunter. I see this. I was like, oh, it's the same guy, Paul Diamato, another Italian. Yeah. And he, and, uh, and I was like, this guy, not only is this guy absolutely going on the list, because that's two. Like you only need yeah, two. I looked him up literally after watching the movie. Oh last fuck! Well. So For some reason, t- he popped in my mind. And I saw he was Italian. I was like, oh, all right. He and he and he's been in a number of things. He, yeah, he, he was in more than I thought. I didn't recognize him in Deer he, Hunter. And, yeah, yeah, he's totally been in a ton of good stuff, and he's totally like that. Is absolutely a guy not only that goes on the list of great character actors, but he's a. Yeah. He's got that look. He's got th- these weird, like dark. There's a dark eye thing. Yeah. He looks disturbed, you know. He's like, I hope you send us with a bullet so flying. Yeah. That- <laughs> <laughs> I love that part. Scene, but he's fucking shell shocked. He's oh. at the end of the, the bar, just like, I just want to drink. So that's a I tough want- way to look at that soldier because you're right. Then there are times where it does, it has an anti war element to it. 
you know, I mean, right. obviously the the Russian roulette just all be, I mean, what it shows and showing the aftermath of what it happens to these and what guys happens mentally, to everybody and how know, it. I mean, listen, definitely, definitely, listen. but still, the ending though, it to me, it's still very pro American, you know, because in the end, I, it's I do, know. I do agree with that. And listen, I, I, I do think even without the like, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I don't like the song being sang, not because of. No, I, I don't I even it. know that song. It's like, I, you know, it's like, I don't give a shit about, I mean, God Bless America is like, uh, it, you know, I don't know. I mean, the, the national anthem, you know, God Bless America is that weird one that you kind of know, you know, it's the like tune. the B side, you know, it's the B side. It is. It's like, it's, it's a uh, little sister, don't you, you know, by yeah, Elvis, it's the yeah. B side, but it's, it's like the movie is so realistic up into that point that it's, it's just hard for me to wrap my arms that around. That is exactly what I wanted to say about that ending, yeah. though. That is the only thing. It's like that. It's it, to me. It's it's interesting to put it in there to get people talking. You want that yeah. kind of like ambivalent ending where you don't know where everyone's at, but it's not what would have happened. You no. know, it's definitely not what would have happened. They no, would have no, gotten no. drunk as fuck. They would have, you know, they would have been fight drinking, probably. There would have been a fight. They'd been have drinking, yeah, Meryl yeah, and, wrong yeah, exactly. John Cazale would have like, you know, slapped some chick or something. You know, it, it's it's yeah. not what would happen. So, Listen, what's you know, the PA people? They can't they can't play nice ever. Even no, it, it, no, no, no. That uh, would not, not with that happened. vodka they drink. I mean, I vodka they is a that they that they, <laughs> they fucking drink vodka like it's water. So it's I mean, Russians, it's, bam. Oh my god! But I will get on board with you, and I'll take the train to the end of the line, saying that yeah, this is a this is not an anti-American movie. This is absolutely like if you are in the theater and you're watching this movie, and you don't feel like the because there's never a moment. I mean, think about it when when you're watching the war scenes in the second act it's not like you're seeing the viet cong as like nice people yeah they're, and you they're... don't even know how accurate that was either like he didn't really have any um you know any type of uh military advisors on set or anything and the what i read in uh the final cut book when they were making heaven's gate was um a lot of the critics that gave it praise felt duped later that they shouldn't have gave it as good of a review as they did because no one knows how truthful it was or any of that oh, stuff. Oh yeah. So, I've heard this. Yeah. I've I've heard that like, you know, there's never been any reports of uh Russian roulette uh, being played. Well but you know who what gives a like, fuck is my whole kind I think it's such a great like, it's in the great moments in movies. About it. It's the it's one of the greatest scenes. I mean, guess what? You know what, motherfuckers? I've never seen a flying DeLorean either, you <laughs> cocksuckers. Like, it, you know, that's I mean, look a, at Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Now is not even like, I mean, you had like. That's somebody, not even. Yeah. yeah it's, like, that's fuck. not even. Yeah. That, that like. That's not even reality. Yeah, that is not and, to believe and, me. That, and that is becomes not one of the biggest movies, though, that like Vietnam vets talk about not being able to watch because of the reality that it gets in your Which head one? so much is Which Apocalypse one? Now. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's probably because they didn't have to play Russian roulette in uh, Vietnam. <laughs> well, and and here's the thing. It's like this movie is a it's not about the action. There's no act. I mean. No, I agree. With there, you. There's no real action in the movie. You could say all day long, like, oh, you know, well, he, it's he not even a Vietnam film. Like, yeah, he, yeah. he, you know, he's a, a platoon is a Vietnam film. You know right, what I mean? Right, like, right, that's right. realistic. Like, that, that was that, you know, he was in, he saw that shit happen. Platoon happened. Like, that's the kind of, yeah. like, that's real and that's disturbing. Like, right. That's, that's probably the most accurate. Like, that's just, yeah. that, that's the kind of stuff that makes you like, you know, I don't want to be in uh, in that shit. Like, you don't know who's shooting at you or whatever. But Deer Hunter is it's it's a complicated movie because I think it is it's not anti it's pro American, but it's like come on, you know. I, I think at the least it's like it's pro American. These guys are wrong. Communism is wrong, but this is what we're doing to our people because we're drafting these young kids. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's sort of, definitely yeah. I'm not agreeing. It's like, I th I mean, it may, and I'm not like shedding any new light on it, but I think that that's really all it is, is just America is great. Uh, war is necessary, but God damn, this is what happens. And that's what all art is. 
art, art is not supposed to change is not supposed to it's supposed to represent you know that's yeah. what that was doing is just now, showing you this I is what's think, happening i think too some of it is looking at the moment in time with chimino so this yeah. is his second movie he comes out. What was number one? What was number the one was Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt and yes. God, so that, he comes out and he I does love that. Thunderbolt. And now him and his partner, Joanne Corelli, their whole story is interesting. And we can do a whole episode. Was on she them. Italian? Yeah. And now oh, that was his like, I don't want to say it was his, maybe his girlfriend for a while, but she was certainly the closest confidant he's ever had in his life. Oh, wow. And, and she always played bad cop and she's like a weird credit in deer hunter. She's like production consultant or whatever, but everyone always said that was the only person that he really ever answered to was Joanne Corelli. But these two as a team, right? right. He, they come out to LA and he you know, works on scripts. He, you know, he wrote, um, I think he wrote one of the dirty Harry R- wrote, wrote, wrote the first one, dirty Harry. Really? Okay. I thought it was the oh, second no. one. Oh no, the second one. But anyways, but these two, they come to they come to um, they come to L.A. and um, they they go ahead and they make Thunderbolt Lightfoot. They meet Clint. I mean, they end up putting a script together that was almost almost exploitation ish, you know, in a way, just a very easy sell action type movie. They get Clint on board. Clint made him a deal was like, if you if I don't like what you're doing after a few days, I can fire you at any time. (laughs) They agreed to do it. And Clint's just such a fascinating guy. Just, you know, I love always... Clint, man. So Jesus. that happened. And then I don't know what the fuck he did, but he just knew how to hijack fucking Hollywood. They ended up putting this together and all the producers hated Chimino, kept getting bought out from, you know, different like uh, companies would sell to another company. And it was just like crazy how it eventually got made. All kinds of, you know, writers in and out, producers in and out, all this crap. Well, is it because it gets... of, is it because Thunderbolt, and Lightfoot was a hit that he got the carte blanche or I, I, I think he made the carte blanche happen for himself. I don't think it was ever really given to him. And that's what's so fascinating about him and Joe Joanne Corelli together. They kind of backdoored their way into that position. And that's why it's hard to get a good read on Deer Hunter as what it represents, because I mean, this is a director who fucked with the material the whole time and i don't know maybe it is another one of the movies that we just dig too deep into and it was just a no. cool movie with a couple great you know Vietnam well i mean moments and that fucking opening wedding was great it, it is a great i think movie. I, th- I mean look listen i think you said something i think you hit it right on the nail which is generally speaking when you make something when you make a film and it all works and it's cool and people love it it, it you know i <sighs> I don't think you go. I mean, listen, think of it like this is like Stanley Kubrick. When he goes and makes The Shining, apparently he has all of these things going on that he wants to be noticed. And, and you know, uh, that he's doing, you know, not subliminal, but, you know, semi subliminal. And nobody notices that shit until documentaries come out years and years and years mm-hmm. later. I, I, my point is that I think Chimino knew a good thing idea he knew a good way to to approach it and and like any good director he was like okay i'm gonna make this really cool movie and i have a really good idea and i'll i'll put some artistic flares i mean look them singing america the beautiful at the end you know i would buy it if you told me right now that he just came up with that on the spot and said hey you know what just sing this this would be weird you know what i mean like (laughs) I, there's a part of me that thinks that like some of this, and I'm not saying accident. I'm just saying that I think some of this is just, I think this will be cool. Like, I think this would be a cool moment. I don't know why yet. Maybe it'll flesh out because that's art. Certainly you know, that's possible. Yeah. That's yeah. the yeah. talent of being an artist, right? Is that like, sometimes something seems cool. You don't know why, but let's yeah. try it this way. And then years later, maybe people dissect it and you think, oh, OK, well, like there's a lot maybe- of intent behind like Heaven's Gate. But when you watch Deer Hunter, it just it's it's it does feel like there's a lot of us try this now. We're going to do this next because was he, it is all over the place. In was he into Yayo? Was he into Coke? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. His private life is the most craziest because what he would do is nobody 
Joanne Corelli was probably the only one that would ever really did know anything. I mean, so much weird stuff behind this guy, but nobody ever knew anybody. He had like one friend that was this person, one friend that was that did this, one friend that was like his hairdresser or whatever. That's like an and, Italian right there. Like you're, 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 you're like you separate them. Yeah, and they didn't know each other, so it was really hard to know like who the real Michael quote unquote ever was. I mean, remember the whole sex change thing? That was the wildest thing when you told me that. Yeah, I, I, mean, and, I have, and I have never, true. I never, I never knew about. I mean, you know, I'm not I mean, gonna it's lie. True in a way, it's true in a way. Like no, I, even in the book, they didn't really know for sure. But those yeah, pictures of him are weird. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, like they're himself, they're no all question. they're all. It's so strange. It's not just plastic surgery. It's like it's it's the pictures that you can see. They're just he's like a different being. You know, yeah. a different human. But, you know, when you said that, when you told me that, I was like, whoa, what? Yeah. Like, and the one thing I got from him and from reading his book, and um, I I always said this when it comes to Chimino, I got this from him was like, I don't think he I think he hated himself. And whoa. I think he didn't like to look at himself in the mirror, stuff like that. And I just think. After Heaven's Gate happened, it he probably... wasn't an ugly dude. No, he, he was, was not a, a bad looking dude. Actually. Got girls and like, always, what is yeah. wrong with him? Jeez. No, they said they go. They, uh, I, I, you know, the there was one person that was supposedly really close to him and that knew about his possible sex change. And um, who knows? Who knows? Don't that ever. Just let to- me tell you something right now. Don't you ever get a sex change, you motherfucker. Don't you ever. <laughs> I ain't promising do anything. It. I ain't promising God anything. God damn it. This is you know, this world funny. is <laughs> crashing around us. I, I but going back to Deer Hunter, I, I, I just talking about that with him alone shows me how close he is to Michael, where it's yes. just. You can never figure out who the real person is. Just Michael like Michael is, was, you can't yeah, figure that out. And that's Michael that is a, not a pussy hound. Like no. Stan, John Cazale is a pussy hound. Yeah. Christopher Walken is the, you know, Nikki doesn't even need to be a hound. It just, he just, you know, the pussy comes yeah, to you him. Yeah, you think he's a guy who gets all the girls. He just, right, he doesn't right. even have, it's, it, he doesn't even have to try. And then, you know, you know, you know that. You know, George Zunza is just a pussy hound. He's looking <laughs> always. And, he's and looking. So is, That's about oh, he's, it. I don't know if he's getting, but he's lo- he'll take whatever. Yeah. And and uh, and Axel, you know, he's he's he likes, ch- you know, they're all interested. But what about the- that opening when they're their last day at the steel mill and they're walking, they're walking through like a shower. <laughs> it's just like these old men taking a shower with their dicks hanging out. <laughs> and they're all shaking hands with each other. Like, all right, good luck. Shoot I thought about, you know, out there, you know, it's funny you bring that up. I thought about that last night when I was watching. I was like, you know, what a strange job. Because I mean, like, even when I was in gym and in junior high and high school, it's like I never had to, you know, you didn't go into a shower. I never went into a shower and saw naked, you know, dudes like it it just seems like an odd and I get it because you you're, you know, they have I could see like bleeding with testosterone. It's just yeah, it's like you got it. And it's like just men like, you know, these old I mean, can you imagine that your daily life is you get off at five o'clock and you walk and and you you walk through, you know, you you go and shower with these crusty old 90 year old dudes that are just fucking their 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 fucking <laughs> cranks are just hanging down you're like god damn but that is just, and drunk. that and again that's a great touch right there no pun intended but <laughs> that's a great like little moment of just this is what this daily life is they fucking work this hard ass Man, sweaty yeah. ass nasty job and they got an old fucking dude dick just hanging out in the shower just, like to daily. me it's always like just blood western pa you know that just everything about it i wish they would you know the mountain scenes the, oh, the actual yeah. deer hunting the scenes were not in pennsylvania because they shot in the summertime and there wasn't any or fall or or some anyways there wasn't any snow so they had to go to washington state to ah. film those scenes they which those some, mountains they are need, beautiful well, there god yeah beautiful beautiful and then I guess they're supposed to be like the Appalachians or something. But, you know, uh, speaking of that, I, I do want to say this about the hunting scenes. Uh, not in the first one is like, I mean, to me, the first hunting scene is all about 
this is this, you know, like that's, yeah, yeah it's a that's weird moment, that, right? that, and, and leaving George and, and that and pulling the old prank on George Zunza where they, oh, he's taking a piss, a piss <laughs> and they keep driving off. I did that to my I love mom. That part. I can't tell you how many, because of that movie, because of deer hunter, the number of times I did that to my mom or any girl I dated where I would just like, they'd go uh, into the gas station or to the video store and drop off something. They come back and I just fucking drive off a little bit. They'd be like, stop. <laughs> that's just the good moments of the that one. Hunting scene. Oh, that's a great. Yeah. But the second hunting scene is the hunting scene because yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. That's not only is it because he can't, he's just, you know, he can't shoot him. He's like, all right, all right. You but win, that you know. fucking but with yes. Stan with Stan. Now I think that was the last scene he legend. Shot. I believe Le- that was yes, scene. yeah, Le- yeah. Okay, so legend has it, and this is I don't know. I you know I've I've only heard this, but it was I've heard it was the last scene they shot with Kazal. Yeah, and that they used a real bullet. I like heard they, that too. Is I that heard, true? I I hope it's true. And if it too. is true, I hope we do that sometime with some somehow. <laughs> like I don't the fact is that I can totally see that just being bonkers true. Like mm-hmm. I don't I mean because here's the thing you're Robert De Niro, you're John Cazale, you're all, you're Michael Schmidt, you have all, you're the, you know, you're basically the the power players of Hollywood and you can do whatever you want. And I could see them saying, and especially John Cazale, because that dude had more balls than fucking- Six months to live. Yeah, you know? six months to live, he doesn't give a fuck. And I could see him saying like, put a live one in that because I want the, you know, I, I see that being real. I, I, I the personally only I believe don't that think is I, I can't see De Niro doing it. I can see Chimino saying yes. I can see John Gazelle saying to do it, but I can't see De Niro being like, okay, put a live round just because if it did go off, he just killed his, you know, okay. he did it. I just can't okay. see okay. it. Even Apropos, though I want it to be all right. true. I want I, listen, it to be I'm true. with you. I'm li- I'm with you, but if you I mean look, the scene is broken. It's not like you it's just on De Niro. It's not a two-hander. Like the close-ups are just Kazal with a with somebody That's holding true. the gun. It That's could true. have been. Listen, it could have been that. It could have been Chimino himself. It could have been. <laughs> it, I, 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 that's what I can see. Is it, it'd be like me and you. It'd be like. Okay, Vito, just put a bullet in that gun and put it to my head like fucking uh Ben Ben is 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 out there <laughs> Ben's out in the trailer. Put the <laughs> bullet to my head with the bullet in it. I can see De Niro not being around like he's he's at his trailer and they just filmed that close up and they were like, "Okay, let's just do one. One take of the bullets in the gun and you got it at my forehead." I don't know where it is in the chamber, but it's at my forehead. I could see that. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah. I could see it too. Especially with that group of guys. I could see it. Yeah. No question about it. I could see it's something that I, you know, uh, you know, there are, there are many avenues with this film and I, and, and, you know, we can, I mean, I, I think we could go on, on and on, but I, yeah, I we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up here soon. We'll wrap I'm it up saying. here soon, but, <laughs> Sorry, but I, everybody, I, no, 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 <laughs> this is the, the people they, like, they're not running from this. They want this one. They yeah, want it's this such a one. Great this movie. is dripping. And this is like, our show's namesake. I mean, I, anytime we can is. do a Tamino movie, we got to do it. You know, this is the only Tamino. I mean, to me, this is the only. I mean, honestly, besides Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, this is the only Tamino movie that I've seen all the way through. Well, there's Heaven's Gate. I gotta still. I still have to see that on Flix HQ. Oh, they yeah, okay. have Heaven's Gate, and it's like I think it's, I think it's the legit. Well. Oh, okay, it probably is. They did uh, it, the the real ones floating around now everywhere. It's kind of it's like, like over time. three hours. Yeah. It's like yeah. legit. What about Year of the Dragon? Have you ever I've seen, seen that? a lot of that, but I've never seen it full. I've seen obviously I've seen the ending, the bridge scene, and I've seen to me the best scene is like you know when his wife gets killed and then he's at the funeral and he's just yeah. fucking everybody touches his shoulder, he just cries and hugs him. You know, yeah, like that is a scene. I mean, the only one of his that I don't really, I'm not a huge, huge fan of is, why well, I, I did not see it. I, I haven't seen the Sun Chaser that he made, but the only movie I'm not a fan of really is, is The Sicilian. I was just about to say, like, 
The so Sicilian, I kind of like Desperate Hours, if you've never seen Desperate Hours. I, I've Mimi seen Rogers. a little of that. I've seen a little of that, but I haven't seen it. Um, Pretty good. The Sicilian, though, you know, it's funny because I, um, did you do an episode on the Sicilian? Yes. Didn't you do an Yeah. 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 It, it was just a disappointment to me. I had the VHS, so I went to yeah. go through it and, and everything. But it's based off of um, the Italian. I mean, it's based off of the Godfather, like kind of you know uh, uh yeah. novels and stuff like, like that like there's a, the, the earth the, those years in italy yeah uh, there's a book called sicilians they couldn't get the rights to michael corleone because paramount so it was just well christopher it, lambert i mean yeah and you know i mean look he was good in one thing and that's the highlander and that's it <laughs> okay i mean yeah, yeah i don't know why but, they cast him as, as uh, he's character. like because oh, he's he's from sweden or something he's got a weird accent you know that's what i'm saying chimino sometimes casts very you know suspect sometimes but then sometimes he hits the nail on the head you know i think i said his eye to me is is the best i mean he can make just he can make things look so i mean the cinematography of of heaven's gate is well even deer hunter and all, all of his movies well, are always just and he's an actor's director like he's an, i mean mickey rourke always talked fucking highly about you mm-hmm. yeah and because he you know and, and and mickey rourke is i mean i love mickey rourke but he's also like a prima donna you know i mean he's Mm -hmm. like got his own issues but he's he's super like into himself and he's into being directed by an actor's you know he wants to be given the actory directions absolutely and And i and i I, as we close out i do want to say i do feel that chimino got you know i've said this before i've even said this on one of the shows but i do feel like he got kind of really fucked over from hollywood and I suppose uh, and, and really supposedly that's what the whole um 1980s Oscar was about whenever the, the Heaven's Gate thing happened. But everyone thought that Raging Bull was gonna win Best Picture, but it ended up being um the ordinary Robert Redford, people. yeah, ordinary people, yeah. the Robert Redford movie. So that was sort of like Hollywood because that represented old Hollywood in a way. So yes. that was kind of like the system telling all these new directors, fuck you, we're taking back over now. And I just think he was the fall guy for that. Even to this day, people still talk about, you know, Heaven's Gates, what destroyed the 70s. And I'm like, well, no, that's just the fall look, guy. It was it was going of, under anyways. Yeah. You know? and, and here's the thing, like, uh, and, I, and I think they didn't even perfect, lose any money. They end up golfing. They end up fucking it was a tax write off, you know. Well, and I and I think this is the perfect way to sort of like wrap up this episode is that I agree with you. Like, I've never seen Heaven's Gate. I have it. And I need to. Like I need to. That's I need to do it. I, I've I've recorded two Heaven's Gate episodes, and I couldn't put them up because something happened. And I I'm need like, to it's see. like my Heaven's Gate is Heaven's Gate. So we got to yeah, do episodes. I, <laughs> you know, I need to see it, and and I just need to like just sit down and watch it because I know it's going to be good, especially like the version. Yeah. Um. I it is, I think it's great. I think that Chimino, like whatever personality wise he was, like that that was. Obviously, that was a a factor in a lot of things, but I do believe that Deer Hunter was excellently rewarded. I think that it was right on the money. It got what it deserved. It it should be always. I mean, to me, I think it's his best film easily because it's just obviously it's the it's, you know, one of the very few I've seen of his. But I also just think it's got the I mean, the everything we've said in this episode, I mean, it's it's. It's a man movie. It drips man. It, but it's also, it's not, you know, it's respectful women. I mean, because it shows like how it, shitty men can be, but it also shows how sweet they can be. You know, you, yeah. Yeah. yeah and, um, and I want to throw this in because, uh, I just wanted to surprise you with this. All right. So you, I just thought that it was, I like how things work out sort of, you know, from the ether. You mentioned a Z channel. At the very top of this episode. Yeah. In the Z Channel documentary, which I think every everybody should watch. Yeah. You know, it talks about so many great things. And one of the things it talks about, one of one of the filmmakers it brings up is this guy named Stuart Cooper, mm-hmm. who made this movie named uh, Overlord. And, yeah. and he made a few a few things. And the reason I'm bringing up all this, and it does tie in to, to Chimino in a sense, because Z Channel did tout not only deer hunter but it touted heaven's gate like the director's yeah, cut and that, that was they're a big the thing. ones who first showed they're it the ones the who said hey look it. you yeah. gotta see this shit because you guys don't know what you're talking about 
Well, I always wondered when I saw that documentary, this Stuart Cooper guy who, you know, where did he come from? Who was he? He was Mm -hmm. American, but he was making British films. Like, what the fuck? Well, yesterday, and it all ties in because yesterday is when I just started fucking drinking and watching a bunch of man gravy movies. (laughs) And the very first movie I watched before any of this was The Dirty Dozen. And that goddamn Stuart Cooper was one of the Dirty Dozen. Get out of here. He was one of the goddamn Dirty Dozen. He even gets a cool death scene. He's him and the other guy get killed in the boat at the very end when they're oh all getting blown God. up. Oh, my God. And he didn't terrible. do much That's acting. He, he did that scene. He, or not scene. I mean, he he's he's one of the dozen, but he 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 did that movie. But he became a he just said, I want to be a director. And he used his carte blanche as being one of the dirty dozen to get into the directing but interesting i throw that into everybody here because listen we're talking about michael cimino one of the all-time greatest directors if you want to like dive in to great directors great films see the z channel documentary it it, it gives it, it talks about heaven's gate it talks about this movie it talks about heaven's gate it gives a really great promotion of heaven's gate of why you should see this movie if you are an aspiring filmmaker like why you should see the you know what would you call it the director's cut the oh yeah yeah the director's cut the the one that chimino wanted everybody to see and you know i don't know i just uh i i think that's a a great way to kind of start you know if you're an aspiring filmmaker to kind of jump into this and if you're just a dude Fucking watch some deer hunter and fucking yeah become a man. yeah that's right. Just get that get that dude dripping off you. <laughs> You're just too good to be true. Can't my eyes